Well, hello guys, welcome back. I know we're super late today, but we have a good excuse. Um, we wanted to just get up and casually record today. Um, there was some toxic family member drama that was going to go on today. And about a month or so ago, I'd gotten a card in the mail about it. And today was the day, and for the last couple of days, if I've seemed nervous, that's why. Toxic family, that is not blood, by the way. Um, they're very homophobic, blah, blah, blah. They've been on this campaign for a decade. They're having this to-do thing. And I just, I was nervous today, and I went out, and before I knew what I was doing, even though it's freezing cold, I cleaned my whole damn garage. <laughs> so so I, I was out in this freezing cold cleaning my garage, and I come in, and I shower, and I throw my clothes in the washer, and it was just... It was just about coming to terms with, you know, um, one of the things Odin's been pushing me through the warning period on is, like, coming to terms with, you know, if you're gay and your whole entire family doesn't accept you, and believe me, they have, they have said things and done things, then you don't have them really as family, and you have to cut yourself off sometimes. And every so often they'll try to sneak back into your life because Jesus or somebody's going to ungay you. And you have to stand your ground, even if it means standing alone. I've noticed a hell of a lot of gay people either end up working with Loki or Odin or both. And, you know, they kind of, you know, they're both gods that take off on their own in the lore. You don't have to take the lore as sacred, but they both take off on their own, travel a lot on their own. So they're used to looking out for themselves. And I think that's kind of why they pick gay people, because if you don't live in a gay neighborhood or something like that, or have a lot of gay friends online or whatever, or have, you know, a spouse or someone living with you, it can it can be, you know, it, it can be an uphill battle sometimes standing on your own. And Odin has not given up on his, you know, heathen campaign for <laughs> Will. I tell him, I'm not heathen. I said, to me, it doesn't really matter if the raw tree exists or not. And people that did shit my family line before me, they can handle their own shit. There's just too much Catholic left in me to worry about, you know, making up for anything they did. Yeah, Catholics have a thing of going to God and begging God to let their family member out of hell. And I'm like, I'm not going to negotiate with a terrorist. So I thought, yes, back here. If he has them in a birdie place, good for him. Have fun. Mazel tov. And I got cheers and laughter. Now, hell was a very later, you know, um, addition to Christianity, by the way. But anyhow, getting back on topic, today was just a thing of, you know, cleaning up. And as goes your house and as goes to your property so go you and you know it was about letting go of stuff and letting go of oh what will the neighbors think because as you're starting to clean your garage stuff is all over the damn place but it was funny we talk about manifesting i want to manifested um i had a um rack with um tools on it and fallen over Every man in the neighborhood has seen and commented on that uh, rack falling over. Do you think any of them lifted a damn manly finger to help? No. I ended up having to fix it, so I fixed it. And I did all the work out there. And, you know, I'm the one that made the decisions of this is what stays and this is what goes. And yes, it looks, it still looks a little crowded along the edges because I'm gay. And we like to decorate, and I love to decorate for Halloween. And if you're going to have enough to throw your own parade with, you're going to have some overflow. But, you know, it looks a lot better. It looks picked up, at least. And I even ended up dusting. And I knew it was just getting that nervous energy of just the thought that that toxic, horrible family was getting together and doing stuff. But I manifested getting that, you know, that shelf upright, even though I had to do it all on my own. And, um... <laughs> Look, he's back at your weapons rack. <laughs> and I manifested finding the last time to my chime. And that sounds like, oh, wow, woo, you did it. But I've been looking for that thing for years. I cleaned up my garage and there it was. So, you know, I got some stuff done and it's very empowering. And then I'm coming back and I'm think hearing I'm coming out my head and just, it was good. I've been binging on a lot of Matt Bomb, even though I've seen probably every episode he's done before, but I've been binging on it. And it's just been very empowering. And it's funny that my dad was certainly not the best human being in the world, but I learned cer certain culture things in our family. Like, 
If you come in from working outside, don't you dare bathe in the proper bathroom. You go downstairs and you bathe in that shower stall thing because you smell like a wild animal. And I learned to take the clothes I worked in and take them and put them in the wash right away. So it's kind of funny the manly culture things I have from my, you know, from my family. Um, and, you know, I was thinking about that too. Was it a woman that was outside cleaning? Was it a man? Was it no gender at all? Definitely inner dude did come out because tools were involved and inner dude's like, tools, <gasps> tools, look what we have, we have tools. And he doesn't un intend to do a damn thing with all this stuff, washers and nails and all this other stuff, but they're good. <gasps> Let's make a place for them. So inner guy, but also inner gay guy came out at the same, same time and they're organizing everything as neatly as you can possibly do it. So it was pretty good. There still needs to be some work done, but I finally agreed because I went through a period where I, my hands were freezing cold and then I think it warmed up, thankfully, but my feet were like little, little ice cubes, but you know, it just felt like something I had to do. Not to torture myself, not to prove I could endure the cold, but it was kind of a psychic cleansing of, you know, at one point I was thinking, oh, I wonder if I should have went, you know, to this terrible farce that they have. I'm like, no, this is still their little bitchy thing of, oh, we've, I know they drive by and they spy on me. I know that sounds crazy and paranoid, but they do. Uh, we see you getting your life together, so we're going to bitch at you for something that you don't owe us or anything else. And, you know, I'm poor as a church mouse, by the way, and for you lurkers. These are people with vacation homes, three or four properties. They have renters underneath them. They're landlords. I'm not the one that should be giving them money, okay? And I don't want anything from them, by, for the record. It's just, they're nasty people, and we've wasted too much time talking about them. But the old man is definitely puffing up because this is all the old man. The old man thinks this is a proof of that I am one of his people because, you know, I went out there and I did the thing. And Loki's just kind of standing around with his arms crossed watching everything. But we came in and we threw some lunch together, so we're really late today on everything. But, you know, it was good to do. It was good to do, and sometimes you have to have an impromptu cleansing ritual, and it was a really hard thing, and it was really hard to think these horrible people be together, because I know they're going to be saying shit about me while they're together, but they're also, because they apparently are anti-maskers, they're going out for lunch all together, and I figured, well, we'll be very more of you, so. You can tell the old man to me, can't you? And I, I just shook my head because they've been warning us about a fourth wave. And I'm trying to give you guys a safe space, so I try not to talk about COVID most of the time. But I'm like, damn, this seems a bit foolish. I know every time I leave my house, because I haven't gotten a shot, where the hell would I? And I haven't got tested. I'm kind of like, how do I know if I've even had it or ever had it? Or if I've been exposed and I certainly haven't had a shot. I'll have to wait until everybody else and their brother has their shot, and then when nobody even wants them, that's when people like me will be able to get shots. Let's admit it. So, it has nothing to do with being gay. It just has to do with how far down you are on the ladder of people wind up to get them. So, if you guys like what you see, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.